doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're old, it doesn't matter what walk of life you may have come from, it doesn't matter that you had the abortion, it doesn't matter that your father wasn't there, it doesn't matter that you may have been a foster child, it doesn't matter you know, that you may have just lost your way. It doesn't matter that you, you, you've had repossessions, you may have lost your house, you may, you may have not even finished school. It does not matter where you once were. Your condition right now is not your final destination, it's not your conclusion. You stepped out of people's opinion and then your life started shining. Because mm -hmm. now you're doing some things that is, is you breaking protocol, it's not usual, it's not, I never heard a pastor who used to be a stripper. I never heard a pastor who went through sexual assault. I never heard, like, I haven't heard these stories come out, and that is your life. I had one man doing this, the other one doing that. I had, like, a 90-year-old man. <laughs> he was about 90. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, literally, he was about 70, 70, <laughs> 75, and he was paying my bills, mm. and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to do anything, and so that's how I know you can have it all, and if you don't deal with the things that are, you know, you. yeah, you still won't be happy, so you can have the money. You can have the cars, you can have the best, you can look the best. I didn't even know I was pretty. People would say that and I wouldn't believe them. I'm like, I don't know what you see, whatever. Mm. It wasn't until, i never forget, I ended up getting um, a flu shot. Mm. I wanna say I was maybe 22. I ended up getting a flu shot, maybe 23, I can't really remember, but I got a flu shot. I had one son at the time, that was it. Um, I got the flu shot and it made me sick. I, if COVID was active back then, <laughs> I probably had COVID. <laughs> yeah. So um, I told God, I was so sick. I told God, I said, God, okay, listen, I'm coming to you. I know I said this last month, but I'm for real this time because it feels like I'm about to die. <laughs> Have you ever found yourself saying, God, if you give me this one thing, if you get me out of this, I <laughs> promise you I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave her husband alone. I'm gonna do all this. I'm gonna leave everything alone if you just don't let me die, please. I'm sorry. And I did that, but it was something about that cry that day mm. that I knew I wasn't gonna go back. Mm. Like I said, God, I said, God, I'm serious. I said, God, I'm, I'm sorry. I said, God, I've lost everything. I'm still not happy, I'm empty. I said, God, I'm broken. I said, God, this is not who I am. I said, so God, help me to deal with this darkness that I'm possessing, that I'm holding on to. I said, God, please help me, get, get me out of this. I said, I don't wanna die like this. And I get emotional when I think about this part. I told God, I said, God, if you get me out of this, I'll start turning my life around. There was a guy that I was with or whatever, he was, he was married. He ended up buying me a car. And he called me, he said, hey, I, I got something for you. It was November, um, Thanksgiving had just come around. He said, I'm gonna get you a car. I wanna bring it to you. I said, well, I don't, I don't want it. Mm. And I needed a car <laughs> because mine had just gotten repossessed. <laughs> I said, no, I said, I don't feel good. Um, I'm sick, I think I have the flu. I said, I don't want it. I said, I'm, I'm going in a different path now. Mm. And it really hurt me to say that because he had what I needed. Mm. But God was telling me, you just told me yeah. you wasn't going back to that. Yeah. So he came down to my mom's house. Remind you, I had lost everything. I had lost my apartment. I had lost my job because my job had shut down mm -hmm. <laughs> indefinitely. We were on indefinite shutdown. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a really good job. I was the only African-American young lady mm -hmm. 
in an in a warehouse in a whole like plant mm. in the office setting. They had never hired a black girl before. Mm. I had favor on my life then and didn't even know it. Yeah. And so I remember him coming down. He had the car, whatever. He was like, "Do you want to drive it?" I said, "No." I said, "I." I said, "It's nice, but I can't take it." He was like, "Well, at least drive it." I'm like, "I said I don't feel good. I'm okay." He said, "Candy, please. What, what's wrong?" I said, "I can't do this no more." And so I drove the car down the street and drove it back. If I can be real with you, like I was like, "Man, <laughs> God, can I please take it?" <laughs> I need this car. And this is the car I've been wanting. God said no. And so I went back in the house and I shut my door to my room. My mom was there. And I just cried and cried and cried. And my heart was so heavy. Have your heart ever been so heavy to where it's like on fire? Like it's like a fire here because you're crying on the inside. Tears that have not come out yet. So I'm crying. And I said, God, okay, now you're going to have to provide for me. I said, because I just turned that down. And I said, God, show me everybody that's not meant for me for my next year. Mm-hmm. I had never really heard God's voice before. I've, I've always been a dreamer. Mm-hmm. So I would dream all the time, but I've never really just heard the voice of God before. Or seen his, you know, his view on things. And I said, God show me. I said, because I, I said, I'm being rejected by the one that I really want. And I said, I just don't want to go into next year with all of this. So he showed me the guy, which was my oldest son's dad, my high school sweetheart. He was like, that's not going to work. He showed me a friendship. I was like, no, not don't take my friendship away. I was like, she knows all my dirt. Like, mm-hmm. Whatever you do, like, <laughs> don't take that one because I don't want my stuff to go out public. He was like, God showed me me excelling in a place of prayer. He was like, I need you to just pray. And so I started praying and I would get my phone and I would start recording myself praying. Mm. And then I listened to it. And I'm like, I sound so stupid. (laughs) I was like, why is it if you're telling me to pray, why is it that when I pray, I don't sound like what I thought I heard? Mm -hmm. Like, he was like, just keep on going, Mm -hmm. keep going. Not knowing that he was building on the inside of me a ministry of prayer. He was building my ministry on the foundations of prayer. Mm -hmm. And so I kept praying and kept praying and I just fell in love with God. I didn't want nothing else mattered. I ended up getting married. That marriage ended up failing, but um, I ended up getting married again. But my ministry on prayer ended up just skyrocketing. Mm -hmm. People would call me from all over to pray for them. Like my social media would blow up my messages. Like I would go live on prayer, such powerful prayers. Like people's lives would be changed around, turned around, transformed because of the prayers that I prayed. And from there, I ended up birthing forth a prayer academy where I teach people how to pray, how to hear the voice of God. I teach them the foundations of prayer. Why is it that we pray, the different levels to prayer, the different dimensions of prayer. And it felt good. And so from there, the Lord started healing me from that place of shame regarding my story. Mm. And he told me, he said, you don't have to be ashamed. He said, be naked and not ashamed of your story. He said, because your scars, he said, your scars will be able to show people what I saved you from. Mm. And so from there, uh, I've been able to share my story with many different women, you know, because this is the type of things, women don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. We don't want to be real and just open and honest. And so from there, like, I didn't know that there were so many wounded women. I thought I was by myself, you know, and just being able to show them how I triumphed over adversity in situations that could have like literally took the life of me. Even when I wanted to take the life of me, God still prevailed. It was almost like God was like, you can't die now because there's something greater on the inside of you. This ain't it. This this is not this is not how your story is gonna end. 
So from there, I ended up birthing for Victory Secret Empowerment. Mm -hmm. So that's a mentorship program that I have. And I'm able to mentor many different women. I'm talking about older women, way older than me, younger than me, um, that have struggled in the area of molestation, abuse, abandonment, rejection, um, homosexuality, all of that. And just seeing that God has made me almost like a distribution center mm. or a hub, a, a, a place of a hub, like a healing place, a healing hub wow. where they can be vulnerable. They can be transparent without judgment and they come in, but they go back out a total different way. Wow. It's amazing. Wow. That's my story. Okay. I have so many questions. <laughs> I don't know where to begin. Um, so... <sighs> As a little girl from age five going on to, I believe, 16, mm -hmm. was a time of confusion, mm -hmm. insecurity, shame, darkness, yes. and um, you rebelled a lot, you fought a lot. Um, so on a regular day, like, how were you living like on a regular day you go to school and then you're, you're home with your mom or just doing your mom at home I believe no so I have um at the time I had three other uh siblings so okay. it was just it was four of us I was the oldest mm -hmm. so on a daily basis it would be me coming home from school I wasn't really doing well in school because my attention span was just whatever and just I just felt unwanted like my mom showed me love like she she pushed me she even put me in modeling school I started oh, modeling really? yeah I was a model mm -hmm. I did um different gigs for like Dillard's and Sears um I did a lot of acting okay yeah so I mean she she pushed me she knew that she needed to see her daughter excel in the area of confidence mm. because she saw something even though I didn't voice it to her mm she saw that my confidence was breaking, mm. but she didn't know why. Mm. And so she did, I, I have to give it to her. Mom is the reason why I ended up walking in a place of confidence. Okay. If it had not been for her, I probably would have been messed up. Okay. And with all that you were doing, um, what was your escape to escape from like what was happening to you, like your emotional um, abuse, the insecurities? What, what did you use as an escape route? Really then, it was just, as a little girl, I would say, um, I didn't really have an escape route. I would take it out in a toxic way, like picking fights with my siblings, you know? Um, I took that route, rebelling against my mom. She'd tell me to do something and I didn't, like whatever, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it wasn't until I got older where the healing started taking place, mm -hmm. I started, the route I took was prayer, mm -hmm. finding out who God was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand it by reading the Bible. I mean, I'm like, God, if you want me to be so close to you, why do you make the Bible so hard for me to understand? Like, I don't understand this. This is like it's, it's foreign. Right. It's just Hebrew. Correct. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I don't know this. This, yeah. this is not my cup of tea. Yeah. And so I started reading the easy to read version of the Bible. And from there, it's like, he started talking to me. I'm like, mm. I can do this. Mm. I can do this. I hear you clearly now. Mm. And so that, that became my, um, my evacuation plan, okay. reading the word. Okay. Now, this part of your story, um, when you told me, I think my mouth dropped. Like, how on earth? Because um, right now, you are a prophetess, mm -hmm. you are a pastor, you are changing the lives of women ministry, women in ministry, and you came and spoke at my church, and I was looking at you like, so, how, how is this, like, there's so much power in you, and you're so graceful with it, like, how can you handle power in such a graceful way? But that's another topic for another day. <laughs> um, so, this part of your story, when you mentioned, I don't know when this happened, but you mentioned it was a time in the period you were stripping now. Mm -hmm. When did that start, and how old were you? Yeah, I was 20. Okay. I believe I was 20. I went in, I'm like, you know what, forget it, I just want money. Mm -hmm. And so I told my family, but they didn't believe me. <laughs> and I really don't. I was like, y'all, like, I'm really, I'm going to do it. <laughs> I told my grandmother. She was my best friend. Like, she knew it. Like, I, I said, I'm, I'm going to do it. And so I, I did it. And 
it wasn't for me. I think I did like two nights and I'm, mm. no, this is not, this is not for me. Like this is not, this is not who I am. It's like you knew, you knew back then. I knew back then, but I didn't know. I knew there was something. And so I didn't belong there. And there was a young lady that was there and told me, she was like, you don't, you don't belong here. Wow. This is not, I was like, I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. I don't care at this point. I got at my baby, time, I think right? Your job was failing. Was this around this time or? Yes. Yeah, so um, I ended up coming out of college. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my baby. Um, I ended up coming out of college, and I was just looking for money. I was like, anything at this point because I have to take care of him. Where was the I couldn't hear you. Your sugar daddy. Oh yeah, they were they were around, but it was like mm -hmm. I still had this sense of pride about myself, uh -huh. where I believed I should never have to ask a man to do anything. <laughs> like if you don't voluntarily do it, I'm not going to ask you. Mm -hmm. And so I had that about myself. So I don't know if that was good or bad, but mm -hmm. you know, but um, it it just created so much toxic behaviors on the inside. It was. It was really hard. Mm. So stripping was not something it was not long. No, it wasn't long. Mm. Yeah. It's just not who I am. It's not who I am. Now, at the beginning stages of me coming into ministry, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I thought about it. Go on. I was like, I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> if I can back back a little bit, um, I auditioned to be a Playboy Bunny. Okay. They ended up. Hugh Hefner or whatever had this thing. They have this thing or whatever where you can audition to be a Playboy Bunny. And I'm like, I'm going. And I did it. Mm. And I made it to the second round. Mm. But at the second round, instead of me going back for the audition, I ended up getting together with this NFL player. And mm. that dream of becoming a Playboy Bunny was out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Um, <laughs> Even though um, he came in, it was like, he don't even understand that even though that wasn't good, it's like he saved me from taking another step, you know? So, you know, I believe everything is divine. And all this was before the Salvation. encounter? Yes, yeah. it was before the encounter, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, the encounter, this is like, um, I wanna know how, you said you heard God's voice for the first time. Mm -hmm. A lot of people question that, how do you hear God? Did he yeah. like, Candy, I need you to like. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> that's what I was thinking that he would have done. <laughs> Everyone thinks that yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, I'm listening for the sound. <laughs> and it was not like that. Yeah. It was basically, it was, it sounded like me. Mm. His voice sounded like my voice. Mm. And it was just very calm as I'm speaking right now. Mm. And... I just knew it was him. It was a, it was a, it was such an assurance that came with the voice. Even though it sounded like me, there was a certain knowing that came about with it. So I knew that it was God. Mm. He, he was just like, let it go. And he showed me pictures. He's very, God is very visual as well. Mm -hmm. So he'll show you visions and he'll show you almost like screenshots mm. of your future mm. and the way I'm able to hear God's voice even now a lot of times when he's speaking to me like just right now mm. if I'm busy I don't want to hear you right now mm. <laughs> so a lot of times God will put me to sleep and cause me to dream a thing mm. or put me into deep prayer mm. and then he'll show me a vision vividly before my you know before my eyes and so that's what happened and when I heard his voice I'm like okay this is God mm -hmm. and I no longer struggled with okay is this you or is this me mm -hmm. is this you or is this me mm -hmm. even when it became with him sharpening my prophetic giftings mm -hmm. there was there's such an assurance knowing that is his God. voice but that's the thing we we I couldn't know his voice until I spent time with him mm -hmm. Like, yeah, absolutely. It was relationship. I tell my students in the prayer academy all the time, if you have children, if you have a relationship with, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend, marriage, children, whatever, the reason why you're able to identify their voice, if you're at Disneyland 
and everyone's screaming on the ride or you know at the hot dog stand at the carnival and they're screaming your name or they're screaming mama mama or whatever you know that it's your child because you've what you've spent time with them and you know their voice yeah. and so now I understand the meaning when he says my sheep know my voice mm. and a stranger's voice they will not follow mm. um, and so spending time with him the same way we spend time with you know our friends our relationships our marriages children jobs mm. co-workers mm -hmm. and we get acquainted with their voice we start getting acquainted with the SOPs and things like that at work and policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. God wants us to get acquainted with him. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I had to do in order to sharpen my gifts, in order to find out who he was to me and find out who I was. Mm -hmm. And when, when I got lost in who God was, mm -hmm. I started knowing that, okay, I'm not my past. Mm -hmm. I'm not this person. Mm -hmm. I'm not who I used to be. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was it was pretty cool. So you, you grew up in a Christian home. Yes. Your mama took you to church. Yes. <laughs> she um, she ended up getting saved. Mm. Um, must have been about eight years old. She got saved in her hair salon. Mm. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's she's talking like some other kind of language. I want that. <laughs> what is she saying? I want I want to do that. And so I was filled with the Holy Spirit at about nine. Mm. And I started speaking in other tongues and it felt so good. I'm like, and I saw my mom like do this thing where they touched her and she like fell out. And I'm like, let me fall out too. <laughs> and I didn't even feel anything, but I fell out. <laughs> and so um, my mom ended up becoming a pastor um, at the, wow. I, I was 24 and she became a pastor. Of course I'm saved at that time. Mm -hmm. And so a few years later, um, I accepted my calling to the ministry and I became her assistant pastor. And from there, the rest is history. Wow, mm -hmm. I love it. So you now, um, you own a spa mm -hmm. and you have Vic Victory Secret. Victory's Secret. Um, and your prayer academy. So let's talk about a little bit of what you do, like each business is, mm -hmm. why you're doing what you're doing, because everything about you is woman empowerment. Absolutely. Everything you do is woman empowerment. It may look different to people on the outside, like why is she doing that and she's a prophet? Like why, so I need to know a little bit more about yeah. like why the businesses and what they are mm -hmm. for the viewers outside. Absolutely, so it's so funny you say that because this business with my spa, mm -hmm. I struggled with it because of the calling that's on my life. Mm -hmm. I do have a spa, however, it's, uh, I specialize, I specialize in body contouring. Mm -hmm. So I struggled for so long. I sat on the business for about, let's see, three years. Mm -hmm. I sat on the business for about three years. I studied everything about it. I learned all the techniques. I learned everything. Mm -hmm. And I sat on it simply because I'm like, they're gonna say, well, she's a prophet. Mm -hmm. How is she? helping contour their body. She's feeding into their insecurities, you know, and mm -hmm. what I do in my business with the body contouring in my spa, I basically help minimize and get rid of the unwanted stubborn fat cells. Mm -hmm. So, and I help reshape the body, mm -hmm. you know, if it's a, you know, if it's cellulite, if it's, if you've had a baby or you just have saggy skin, hey, we're going to tighten that stuff back up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want your, you know, your bum bum sitting up a little, <laughs> I'm gonna help you do that. And it's natural, it's non-invasive, mm -hmm. and I'm not injecting anything, I'm not giving you any serum, I'm not doing any of that. It's natural. absolutely natural, and I'm just sculpting mm -hmm. um, a natural uh, technique. And so I struggled with it for about three years. I sat on it, and the moment I said, you know what, these people that are gonna judge me, they're not God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're not going to mess up my money. The moment I thought that I came with that mindset, the first month of me opening my business, the first 30 days, I made $9,937. Mm -hmm. First month. I'm I am like, make sure you cut you off right yeah. there, but you said something that intrigued me, mm -hmm. that the reason why you sat on your business for three years is what they were saying. Yes. And the fact that um, you're a prophet, 
how can you feed to somebody's insecurity? You're supposed to be preaching, oh, you're beautiful the way you are. So how can you help reshape somebody instead of telling them to stay the way they are? How do you fight through that? It's just one day you're like, okay, I'm going to forget about everyone's opinion. Yeah, because it was people bondage. Mm, people bondage. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's, and I'm realizing even more now, like, we put ourselves into a pit of limitation, of limitation, because we're afraid of what everybody else is saying or what are they going to say. Mm -hmm. When what I'm doing, I'm, help, I'm helping, it's still women empowerment because mm -hmm. not one soul that lays on my table, I'm not empowering them. I'm mm -hmm. still beautifying them. I'm beautifying their spirit, giving them, I love to make women feel beautiful mm -hmm. because I remember when I didn't feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. I remember looking in the mirror like, what do people see in me? I don't see it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like this about my body. And it's okay, you know? I've had four babies and there are certain things I don't like, you know, and if I don't like it, fix it. You know, we have, you know, pimples. What do we do? We go to Walmart or Walgreens and we get things to yeah. get rid of our acne, you know? It's so the same idea, honestly. If you same. don't like something, it goes to the gym. If we don't like our hair, we put extensions in. Exactly. We, like, it's, it's all the same. So I had to develop that mindset. And from there, it's just been beautiful. It's been a beautiful journey ever yeah. since. Yeah, and I remember we were having a conversation and this part touched me because it's like I always knew, but I needed to hear it for it to be more evident in my life. We talked about dimming your light and um, I realized that when you hear the analogy dim your light, mm -hmm. you are the light. The light that they're talking about that's gonna be dimming is you. It's your confidence, it's your grace, it's how you walk and talk, it's how you eat, it's how you dress, it's everything about you. And when they tell you don't dim your light or don't let somebody dim your light, it's, it's what you said, like people bondage. Yes. If you were, um, you know, as a little girl growing up, you hear somebody tell you, I don't like your stretch marks, I don't like your hair, that then dims your light because you start covering up, you start doing it the way that they want you to do it. And I realized, <laughs> like, just that small conversation we had, it touched me so much, like, oh, my light is me, I am the light, the light is me. Right. Don't, like, you're gonna tell me I don't like your hair, then I start listening to them, I don't like what you posted, I don't, and I start listening to them, which then causes me to be less of me, like less of who I am inside. So that right there came from you, and you speaking right now also, like, it's just telling me how you stepped out of people's opinion and then your light started shining. Because mm -hmm. now you're doing some things that is, is you breaking protocol? It's not usual. It's not. I never heard a pastor who used to be a stripper. I never heard a pastor who went through sexual assault. I never heard. Like I haven't heard these stories come out. And that is your life, even mm -hmm. though it may have um, a negative component. So that is your life. That's who you are. And I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> I feel like everything that you said literally touched me that much and I just pray and hope that the person hearing your story as well to learn if they heard nothing from you to learn not to dim your light but rather find your light which is you and that could, that is in God because that's already coming up when you connected with God. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Let me wow. stop talking but um, the one thing that I want you to do is um, I also have a heart for um, young ladies, it could be for ages 65, 18 to 65, but I'm more geared towards um, when a tree is growing, that moment where the tree can either turn left or right or mm. straight, and that's like the teenage going mm. to your 20s. And that's why I'm, I'm in my mid-20s, because so I want you to advise um, the ladies that are in that range, trying to find themselves. Do they go left? Do they go right? Do they, do they give up for God? Do they leave God? Do they, like, just advise them, tell them what, the, the, anything you want to say that will allow to shape who they're meant to be. Absolutely. The is yours. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to give that advice to any young, beautiful woman that may be watching right now. All of us are beautiful in our own unique way. It doesn't matter if you're young, it doesn't matter if you're old. It doesn't matter what walk of life you may have come from. It doesn't matter that you had the abortion. 
It doesn't matter that your father wasn't there. It doesn't matter that you may have been a foster child. It doesn't matter, you know, that you may have just lost your way. It doesn't matter that you, you've, you've had repossessions. You may have lost your house. You may, you may have not even finished school. It does not matter where you once were. Your condition right now is not your final destination. It's not your conclusion. And you may be right now at a place like a breaking point, but as long as you do not break down, you're at a place called what we call a pit stop. Anytime, if, 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 if you're thinking about a NASCAR driver, a NASCAR racer, um, they have things called a pit stop. They can be going around in the race, but they end up stopping only for a tune-up. They stop to make sure that the pressure on their tires are right. They make sure that they can go a little bit. The moment you begin to stop and give up on everything is the very moment where the enemy can come in and captivate your mind and stop your destiny. But as long as you keep moving, the moment you can continue to keep pushing towards your destiny, pushing towards what God has already shown you, it shall surely come to pass. So even now, I break off of you every, every ounce of shame, every part of you that doesn't believe in yourself, every insecurity, every, every ounce of low self-esteem, all of that, the fear, the heaviness, everything that would try to come in and stop and sabotage your destiny, I speak to your destiny right now. I speak to your future right now. I speak to your tomorrow. And I speak right now that it shall be fruitful. It shall flourish today, starting today. Whatever you want to see happen in life, begin to write it down. The moment you begin to write it down, the Bible says, write the vision down. Make it plain. If you look at the word down, D-O-W-N, the last three letters in the word down is own. You begin to own what you just wrote down. I'm telling you from this day forward, own it. That's my word for you, I love you. Own it. That's all Period. I to hear. Own it. And I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go home, write down my visions, and own it. Own it. Period. Period. <laughs> own it. Um, I don't even know how to end this. I don't want it to end. Like, <laughs> there's so much in you. Like, just that little thing you just spoke to the crowd is just, I wish we can continue going, but girl, we gotta stop. But you definitely gonna come back. So I'm, yes. gonna, stop. I'm gonna put you in power her again. <laughs> so I know my viewers gonna love you. Everyone around you thinks um, that of you and, and loves that much of you. So. I want to thank you. Sharing your story is not an easy thing. We had some emotional yes. time, but um, you did it. You pushed it through. And I want to say thank you for mm -hmm. being vulnerable, being open, and being honest. Because um, that honesty and being real is what shapes lives. So thank you so much, okay, for just having this conversation with me. Absolutely. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> thank you.